Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity shader writing tutorial. In this one we're going to be creating a shader where you can have something on terrain like a, an overlay image, I guess, but in this case we're going to be using a shape. So we're going to have a circle that you can move the X, the Y, so like obviously this goes uh, below and above the terrain, that's why it goes and comes back, and then obviously Z this way. Um, and it goes along the terrain, so as we go uphill it goes up. Now the reason why that seems to shrink is just because we've gone up, so we need to increase the Y. Uh, this is just changing it through the um, inspector, though if you were in game, let's say you wanted something to happen on the world, you would give it an exact coordinate, so the Y would be relative, like it would be correct basically, but for the sake of just moving this around, you know, whatever. Um, and with this effect you can also tweak the, uh, like, well the radius, like how far out does the effect happen, and then you can also change the thickness of the border from there on. So it's pretty cool, you can do some pretty cool things with this. Like, you could do that if you wanted to. I don't know why you'd want to. You could have some cool effects with it, basically. Um, so we're going to get into making that. Before I start, I want to say, uh, if anyone is willing to and is um, kind enough to support me on Patreon, the link will be in the description. And also, if you want to see more of these shader videos, then just comment below what kind of shader videos you want to see. Um, I'm going to be going away for the next two days, so I'm going to upload this tomorrow. So I'm going to get one video out, and then... I th th then I'll be missing um, Saturday's video, so as long as you can wait till Sunday, then you know I'm sure you'll be fine. But yeah, I'll have to do without on Saturday. Uh, but you will get Friday video. So okay, let's get into making this. Let's just go to the shader and just delete the code. So we're starting off from scratch. What do we want? Well, shader as always, and the name custom. Uh, what should we put it? We'll just call it like terrain circle and let's open it and properties as always so properties let's zoom in a bit um what might you want well you might want we always need a main texture so this is going to be the actual floor and then we'll put the circle thing on top so the floor is going to be um we'll just call it um well texture um of type 2d and by default, it's just uh, white, as always. And then we need uh, the color of the circle. So we'll just say, like, circle color. Um, I'm just spelling it OU on there because English. Um, I could actually call this like OU, but I know I have American people. And if I, this is just for me. This doesn't matter what it is. As long as we keep this consistent down, then it's fine. Um, and it's of type uh, color, which has to be spelt that way. And by default, uh, we can just set it to red, so R and then G, B, that's red. <coughs> and then we want, uh, hmm. we want a position. We want a vector four position of where it's gonna be. Now, the cool thing about shaders is you can change the values by script. So let's say we do have our player and we want to put the circle on our player, we can refer we can change this next variable from script um so you can always just like update every frame to be the flip the player's position but we don't have a player so for this i'll let us change it in the inspector but if you want in a future video i can show you how to like have shaders that are like dynamic to where the player is or where other objects are you can have like maybe ripples in water when something falls into it so on just you know i'll keep going with this series we'll keep adding more but this will be um this is the center I'll we'll just call it center, and it's a vector four. So you put vector, and then you put in well zero 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 zero, and then on the next line, uh, we need to know how far out the radius is, and then the border from then on. So we need radius, which is a value. So we can put in a range, but I could just let it be any number. Um, Though, for the sake of this, it's pretty, it needs to be a very small value. So I'm going to put a range between 0 and 100. And we'll just start it off with like 10. And then we'll say um, border. Uh, we'll say um, thickness. Um, is a range between 0 and 50. Nah, but, nah. 
I'll grab a hundred again. And I'll just say five. Okay, um, and that's that done. We could also um, take in a main color. And the main color of the ground, which can be changed, we'll just set equal to um, green. So we'll say um, R, G, B. So we've got all our values here, our properties. Now we can start writing it. So sub shader. And this is opaque. We don't have to put this in, but now nah, whatever. Um, CG program. Um, and then let's think. Um, so if we want this to basically have lighting, um, like on the surface, you can put here when we do the pragma, um, when we do the function, uh, we're going to have a pragma. So that's defining the function we're going to use. Um, and it's of type surface, which is, um, and we'll call it like surface func. And if we put, um, Lambert at the end, that's basically the type of light. You'll have heard of Lambert before if you've used Blender or Material like properties before. Um, and we need to bring down our values, so we need a uh, sampler 2D for the main texture. So it's called main text. Um, we need a uh, fixed free uh, main color. Why is it like that? We need a fixed free for the uh, circle color. We need a float for the um, border. And float for the radius. And we missed one, didn't we? We missed center. Um, we need a float. Uh, free for the center because this is going to be um, in like this isn't going to be whole integers this is going to be uh, any value in between and then fixed because it's a color oh, yeah okay that's alright um, alright so now we need a struct uh, input and we need it to have a texture we're going to put on it so float to um, and ooh, let me think about this. Okay, um, UV main text. Yeah, not text. Text. Sorry. Um, and then we also need to take in a world position. So, what world? Pause. Because obviously, if we we need to know where to do it, so we need the world position. Um, the shader position isn't relative to the shader object that it's on. It's relative to the world. So we'll get the player's world coordinate, and then that's what we'll use when we eventually do that. Um, so anyway, we now need to write our surface uh, shader. So void uh, surface think. and it takes in uh, an input called in. And um, basically, there's another type. I don't know if I've already covered it, but it's called in out, and I don't need to basically explain what that is, that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, and now I need to basically do the calculations and there's not actually much to do and this this bit's probably simpler than the whole setup process. So basically we need um, the pixel. So um, as always when you're rendering a pixel with a texture you just do this same line, it's the same every single time. It's text 2D bracket, the main texture that we're using, so main text and then we need to take in the in dot uv underscore main text. So uv underscore main text here. So we're taking in that. So this is basically telling us where to put. This is telling us where to put this. Here's our main texture. Where do we put it depending on our pixel coordinate on the uv. Um, and then we need to have um, basically we need to know where we're going to actually um, draw the whole thing. So we need a distance. So float distance. 
is equal to, and then if you put in distance, it's a helper function, um, all you need to do is put distance and then two two values, and it will give return the float will be the distance. So we want to know the distance from um, the center, which is going to be about like where basically where the center of the circle is. We want to know where that is from in dot world position. Now, in dot world position is the position of this pixel basically. So we want we can basically find out how far away the distance of our pixel from the center of the where we want the circle to be. So like if we go to Unity, obviously we yeah it's not finished yet. So if we go to like if we pick at any particular point on our um, let's let's open good old paint. So let's say like here's the terrain, and let's say the center is here. Um, if we're rendering pixels on screen on this like thing, we're gonna have pixel here, 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 here. We're gonna have pixels all over the place, and it's gonna calculate the distance from this center point to that given pixel. And we're gonna do stuff if it's at a certain point. So what we wanna do is we wanna say uh, if it's um, like if it's less than the max range, then draw it as this color, this this circle color. So let's say the max range is around here. We're saying if it's less than this, we wanna draw our thing. So if we filled all this in now, we'd have just a circle from our player once we put in our value. But we want to have like a kind of border. So we want to say, is it less than the outer rim distance, the radius distance? Um, but then we also want to say plus the um, like border thickness, basically, is what we want to do. And you'll get it in a second. It'll be easier to explain once we've done it. So we want to do a check for each pixel to decide basically what we're going to do with it. So we want to say, if the distance is greater than the radius so obviously we're gonna have a radius um, like how far out to render if it's greater than the radius and when I say and the distance is less than the radius plus the border so that's what I just said on there when I was drawing and the border um, what well, we call it thickness didn't we what is yeah so basically if it's Outside of um, that, and it's uh, less than that plus the thickness. This is where we're going to color. This is where we're going to actually do the circle, because um, the radius is like the innermost part of the circle that we're going to draw, and then the radius plus the thickness is the outermost. So we're going to draw everything in between that. So um, if we do that, then we want to say the current pixel O, which we're, we're taking in. So in out. Normally you'd like just have an output where you make O inside here and return it, but in out basically just means it's going to be taken out whatever it is at the end of the function. Um, so we're going to input some values, do stuff with it, and pass it out basically. Um, so we're going to say O dot um, albedo, which is just basically like RGB, is equal to um, the area color that we did circle color. Um, So we're saying that if yeah if it should be coloured in, then we're going to set it equal to the circle colour. Uh, else, what do we want to do if it's not? We want to um, whoops. If it's not, then we want to ah what am I doing? Um, we want to set the o dot albedo equal to um, let's think which value we want to set it equal to this basically. So when I say equal to c rgb so the rgb value of that um because obviously c is going to be the texture thing um and then at the end we can say no matter what happens the uh alpha uh, alpha of it is going to be equal to the alpha of this main texture which we can tweak so dot rgb uh, no dot a even um and then outside of this at the end we need to ncg now this should work. Um, I might do a little bit more explanation. What have I done wrong? Did I? Really? I did that in one of my videos, but at least I fixed it instantly this time. Um, syntax error. Sub. Shader. Well, it's good to know that if I ever have problems, it's just me spelling stuff wrong. Um, unexpected identifier surface out. Put.
in with a capital. <laughs> Why am I doing all these stupid things? What distance? Uh, wait, what's it saying? Distance. Oh, because uh, I've done distance here and distance there, so I have to do like dist, dist. Is that going to fix it? Oh, um, yeah. I feel like the um, distance thing might be. Uh, huh. Is that from the imported CG? Ooh. Why does it say identify a distance on line 30? Oh, that's just me being silly. Dist there. Fix it. What? Why am I spelling everything wrong? Um, Finally, there we go. <laughs> it finally works. I just did a lot of spelling mistakes. Um, but as you see, here's our shader. And we can tweak values now. So I have the main color of the ground. Oh, wait, I've not actually done that multiplication. Um, well, we'll just see if it works first. So radius, there you go. Thickness, there you go. See, because these sliders, you might want to tweak the values down a lot. But that works. We can now have that. And we can move it along the terrain which you can do whatever you want. You could have a different um, shape moving along your thing. You could have whatever you want. The W value doesn't matter. Um, obviously, this is wise depending on... You want to do it depending on where the player is. You could have something like an aura following around the player on the terrain, or you might want something that gets rendered onto your material. Like, look, so that's, that's changing the pixels on the material, which can be helpful in certain situations. Um... It's like a racetrack almost, I don't know, but you might want something on your shader on the ground and you might want it to move. And it's just a really useful shader, to be honest, that you might want to know. Uh, if you do want to know how to like input your player's coordinate to this center thing, um, watch my shader graph video on that. And it's the same thing. You just access it via script. I, I have got a video on accessing like shader stuff via script. So just watch that if you want. But I could make a tutorial on it to show this actually working with that, which would be pretty cool if you could have a player moving around on this terrain and this circle following them. But, yeah. Uh, I hope this video helped. Obviously, I said I won't be able to get one out on Saturday, so I hope uh, tomorrow is good enough. I'll quickly show the thing. I'll go down slowly. You can pause it if you want to see something. Um, obviously, so we've got properties we take in, the function, the values we bring in from the properties that we actually want to use in the, in the code. You have to do that when you're writing shaders. Um, the structure of an input, so what values we're taking in. Um, obviously with shaders, one of the main things is being efficient as possible, so you don't want to just take in everything, because if you're doing it for every pixel and it's unnecessary, you're just wasting power, basically. Um, this is the function. We take in this as an input called in. This is the variable name inside here. That's why we call it in there. And then in out basically means we're going to be passed in an O, which we change here. And we don't have to return it because it's an in-out type, which means at the end it just gets returned anyway. And then obviously here, if you want to multiply, if you want to make the ground color change off this, then what you need to do is you need to basically say um, the albedo dot rb. So basically on else here, it's this multiplied by uh, underscore main color. That should work. then you can tweak this and do what you want. But anyway, um, this should be helpful. The reason why it's going like a weird color now instead of blue is because we're multiplying these greens by blue. If you want like your actual thing, just turn that off and then you get your colors here. And also, as you see, there's lighting being calculated on it because we've put it onto a Lambert type, which is here. And then we obviously use a surface function. But anyway. That's the video over with. Any questions, feel free to ask them below. Join our Discord, links in the description. Support me on Patreon if you can, that'd be lovely. Um, yeah, thanks for watching, and goodbye.